Mom is emotionally manipulative and is spending my credit. Male, 29. Living in Chicago. So my mother and father have been going through a divorce for over five years. My dad has the money. My mom does not and it seems to be going on for so long because they cannot come to a settlement number. My mom thinks she deserves half of his money even though she signed a prenup agreement. Fast forward to today. My mom has used a good chunk of her own money on this divorce case and is now bringing me into the mix. She has been using the credit cards under my name and says she needs my help with this case. And I need to do this because I'm her son and I only have one mother. With these two credit cards there's currently 10,000 in debt due to lawyer fees. But this is all under my name, my social and my credit report. I initially said I would help her with one credit card cause I understand this is a tough situation but we have to open cause she recently opened the second one without telling me. So there's that. Every time I mention she needs to start paying more off, she gets very defensive and turn around the argument on me saying your father is trying to kill me and you're going to just sit there and let him do that. This situation has given me a lot of anxiety, as my mom has constantly tried to pin me against my dad in this situation. She said I should have no contact with him at all during this and that I should only be on her side. In about two to three years I'm looking to buy a house with my girlfriend and I'm very worried that my mom, with her back against the wall, could do something detrimental to my credit. Two credit cards. 10,000 in debt and one credit card open behind my back. Dot, 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 at what point do I have to take family out of the situation and look at it from a human to human lens? I really need some advice as this is a very complicated situation, but I do feel I need to do what's best for me without feeling guilty. Would really appreciate some advice from this group. Entitled grandma wanted to reconnect after verbally abusing me and my sons. Not entirely sure this is the right place for this, but I'll post it here and see. This happened years ago, but I figured I'd share it now that it's so far in the past. Backstory, my 34F now 10-year-old was born with multiple disabilities and spent the majority of his first two years in and out of the hospital. He's been in a wheelchair since he was old enough to use one. I had broken up with his dad before I found out I was pregnant, but for ease of identification we will just say my sill brought her to daughters and his mom to visit us at the hospital when my son was six months. She and her daughters took turns holding my son and cooing over him like a good aunt and cousins. It got to grandma's turn and she refused stating why would I want to hold a F king. Cripple, I don't even believe he's my grandson since my son would never have a kid with such a fat cow. And her other kids are D too. Before I could say a word, Syl jumped to our defense and shouted for security to escort grandma out and told her to find her own way home. Sil apologized profusely and we spent another half hour just chatting before they left. I had zero contact with grandma until my son was about four and a half. That's where this story begins. My ex wasn't the best father and honestly this was probably the least traumatizing situation he put us through. We've been no contact with him since 2020 but that's a story for another day. So he reached out when my son was about four and a half and begged to take him to see his mom BC. She'd had some medical issues and ended up in a long-term care facility. I refused to let him take him alone so he and I took both my sons to see her. We walked in her room and immediately she started in on my weight and how being fat is the reason both my kids are our word. Youngest son is in a wheelchair, oldest son has Down syndrome, neither of which will ever change, but somehow, she was surprised that oldest still had DS and youngest was still in a wheelchair. She made some comments about him being coddled and if you'd let him out of the chair I'm sure he would walk but you're just babying him too much. Pretty sure his multiple specialists, multiple surgeries and the nerve damage causing him to be a paraplegic say otherwise but okay. My ex stayed quiet through all that. I walked out of the facility and let him know we would never be back and she would never see her grandson again. About 18 months later, Syl reached out and begged us to come to a family reunion they were hosting since grandma was being released from the facility. I refused and explained why. Syl understood and said she would get with us soon without grandma. Grandma found out and cried to anyone who would listen that I'm depriving her of a relationship with her sweet baby and how I'm such a horrible mother to deny her the ability to see him. She took it to Facebook forgetting that most of her friends were either kids that ex and I went to high school with or parents of those kids who all knew why we were no contact with her and low contact with her son. It didn't turn out well for her. She tried one more time pre Panini and got shot down again. Haven't heard a peep from her since 2019 or her son since 2020. I give up.
Me and my mother never had a good relationship. She was 19, my father was 21, and I was the result of the condom blowing. I do not have most of my memories as a child, but the ones I have with her are some of my worst traumas. When I was seven, I had a very tough project to do, so I waste her help. She said tomorrow she continued doing that until I only had one day to give the project. So I entered her bathroom and asked again. She screamed at me and trod her cross. At me, I was in the floor. My head was bleeding a little and I was crying. The first thing she said, God damn it, son, you made me sin. Instead of worrying about me, she was worried that the cross broke in the ground. I have multiple histories like that, but I'm just gonna leave that one. Even though she was like that, I was the one who most protected her from insults from my father. My grandma and my aunts, I never let any of them badmouth her for six years. But when my sister was born, it became clear who was the favorite. I would hold a little anger for my sister. But I do not blame her. She suffered just like me in her hands, but never the same level as me since she was the favorite every time we had even a little argument. My mom would scream at me and treat me like a monster and her like a little. Angel even tough I did tease her sometimes. Mostly she's the one who got aggressive and started being rude. And I could never forget something or else there would be a fifth one day. I forgot one plate and nith in the sink. I was screamed and take a beating the next morning. I do not remember once in my life where she said, I love you or said sorry for how she treated and beated me. But she still believes she's a great mom because she makes her job as a mother even tough. The babysitter is the cleaner and the ones who provides food. She does not have a job and stays most of her time at home. But she's the one who acts the most tired and says she does a lot even tough. My father works 18 hours a day and still makes our food in the weekends and takes us out to little trips. My father is not perfect, but he loves us and knows when he's wrong. I also have a three-year-old brother ever since he was born. My sister got second place in the list of sons. My parents spoil him every day. That kid is turned into a brat who spits, bites, attacks my animals and people, and even tough, he doesn't know how to talk. He knows what he does is bad cause he smiles and runs away when his cough. I have been begging my parents to discipline him but they act as if I mean to the child just cause I don't do his every wish. Today was the last straw for me even tough. I'm the only one who points out how toxic our family is and tries to show my parents how her acting is. Making our family aggressive it never changed, but I still wanted a house where I could get out of my room without fear. I have a difficult in paying attention to my studies so I left my phone in my sister's rock and decided to go to the my father's workshop since he weighs at home. My sister was already there and I asked her to let the keys in the window. She smiled at me and acted as if she couldn't hear. So I scrammed sis let the keys in the window and my mom started another fifth because I don't treat my sister with respect. I pointed out that her behavior weighs not great either but I'm the son she doesn't love equally. So she fifth with me and said for me to study in the tick and I said to her the tick in is to load and every boy walks trough here. But she did not listen so I just ignored her and got in my room now my. Annoying brother wanted the room to himself cause my parents do not let me in my room so now he thinks the room is as now my mom was screaming with my brother my stress and anxiety were getting worse. I was sending a so s to my father trough the computer until she opened my door with her key and now the usual weekend was happening I was in the wall screaming for her to let me go while she was treating me and doing the usual of screaming to my face and calling me names my anxiety and stress were worse than usual and when I'm like that I can't stop talking and arguing with her even tough it would be better if I did now she just trod me at my sister's room and I was crying and I couldn't stop scratching myself or talking to myself then it was time to the baby to sleep I was again trod to room from room and the fifth got back I was tired my heart was beating too fast I couldn't breath properly so I just begged her to leave but she's a piece of shit who likes being riff so she stayed cause she knew I would get worse and it happened I snapped and tried to push her out of my room without hurting her but she stayed so I put on my clothes and tried to leave to my grandma's house, but she didn't let me now she was slapping and pushing me around my sister was begging her to stop, and the babysitter was trying to make me and her calm down, but she continued and continued I locked myself at the bathroom while she now was trying to also make me sister anxios so she would break down, I do not know how can a mother treat her children like that. After the babysitter left and the baby slept she tried having a talk to us it was disgusting she made herself like the victim and said we were the ones pushing her mad and stressed but she's always like that when I finally left the bathroom I made my last attempt with her but she was a wall instead of focusing the problems of her she always deflected and started talking about us or tried to make her life sound awful then I made her shut up and asked one question do you really think none of your actions were bad? 
Her answer made me want to throw up none of my actions were ever bad all I'm trying is to be a mother while my kids antagonize me and make me go mad after she said stop pretending to be a victim son your behavior is disgusting the talk continued for half an hour but after those words I just gave up about my mother or this family I just can't anymore and I'm just waiting to tell this to my father's family sorry for bad English still a student from a different country I hope you liked my stories